so far too. So of course he took me out in the city, which I did not want to go in the city with him because I uh, didn't want David to see me with this other boy and get confused about my interest in him. Which it makes sense to anybody that is interested in one individual versus another and they don't want to give any confusion. Um, of course, Danny didn't know about David and didn't know what just happened the previous day. I could have, I guess, just been honest right away, but I felt kind of like, well, the boy came all the way here. Let's, let's at least go out and talk. And you never know, maybe I will become interested in him and he will um, make me more interested in him than I felt at the time. So I thought, well, let's, you know, let's see what happens. Let's see what, you know, turns out. And of course, and I'm scrolling down right now, um, You, uh, if you've read the revised version, I um, don't like at all the original version, my personal opinion. I like the story, <laughs> parts of the story. <laughs> um, I think I have um, just improved it way better in the revised version because I think um, from an emotional point of view, I really have captured and expressed what I felt at the time. And what I still, some of this, those things I still feel and I'm still, you know, um, all right with that today. Um, I think in the revised version, I really captured that and I really did express and, um, kind of like a painted a picture of the emotional battle and struggles at that time. And of course he's trying to give me gifts and I really don't want to because I knew I was not interested and I knew, um, and it's not just that, he also, I, I mean, I was taught by my dad, not intentional, but through behavior, that if I, if he gave any of us, any of the children, anything that we had to pay through our nose back, and it became to a point where the thing that was given, which should have been a gift, became a burden. And because of that, I would have a hard time receiving any amount of gifts because I did not want to be in debt to anybody on any level. And I did not want to have to just pay back this little gift that somebody gave, you know, gave to you. Because if you really think about it, any gift that is given to anybody, it's an expression of some sort of sentiment. And most of the time, and I know we like to pretend that we don't do this, but it's true. If you really look at, if I really look at my true intentions or feelings attached to that gift, and I'm sure if you take a look at your reasoning, we um, have attachments to any gift that we give. And if it's love, because we express love, it's an attachment, okay, I'm expressing love, but I do want love in return. Um, if it's manipulation, whatever it is, we do put a certain amount of emotion, whatever that emotion is, in that gift giving. The giving. And we express something. So we need to realize that that is a truth. I, um, I really do not believe that people just give gifts and it's like, yeah, I don't expect anything in return. I tell myself stuff like I don't respect anything in return because we shouldn't, but we really do expect things in return. So because of that, I really didn't want to, didn't want any uh, attachments, any, I didn't want to be in his debt on any kind of level. I had a tremendous, amount of pride tremendous not in a some it's in a good sense some i don't think it was that healthy and one of those people that i think um i look back and think you know you have nothing but you're extremely you know proud about it that you have nothing <laughs> so um but i did have my wits about it and um i did have i knew what i wanted and yes i did have pride in a certain healthy kind of way so I'm just gonna going down and um, you can read through and of course 
when he starts insulting me and he, that was the truth that is not in my mind I didn't make that up and looking back now to uh, no that was that was exactly how it happened um, insulting me uh, because um, I was poor and I would have not had such an amazing opportunity that's exactly how he put it I should have kissed his feet at that point because he was giving me such an amazing opportunity and how dare I refuse him and the opportunity that comes with him and being attached to him and all I could think is heck no because who knows how much I'm gonna have to hear about that because if you're throwing that into my face and we're not even married I wonder how much we're gonna throw that afterwards when things are not gonna be as rosy not that I felt any rosiness <laughs> but I was assuming he might have felt some rosiness so um, I also found out that he was he, he was coming from he does have a family you know I think there were seven children so he also came from a large family and a lot of um, he ran made his way to Austria ran illegally somehow there because um, he was still during communism when he left and made a life for himself in Austria and uh, him and a couple of his brothers and so they were looking for lives and I think he was the last one if I remember right he was the youngest and he was the last one and so he was looking for a wife so of course he came to Romania because um, I can't actually answer it because why because that would be in you know he, he would have that answer not me so I can't really answer that so anyway I looked at you know all just scrolling through the proposal was awful 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 I look back and I'm thinking God Carmen you should have had more of a backbone and you should have just told him to his face but I think the train the years of training that's when it comes like my mom training me and telling me not to be rude and all that stuff but it's like no matter how I try to put it and avoid evade <laughs> just get away from the um, just that proposal uh, he just didn't get it and I look back and I now I'm thinking you know you should have just told him flat out I kind of came as close as possible to my understanding at the time but I remember being so uncomfortable and I, I, I mean I was actually praying during that time that God would open the earth and I would just literally be swallowed and just kind of be sucked in and he would be like <laughs> what happened where is she um, that's how awful that moment was for me because I was just extremely uncomfortable and extremely oh I don't know how else I, I should express it um, so of course you can see you know my little humor that was you know the thought that were going in that I never really expressed it out loud so um, that part it is humorous because I think we all do it <laughs> then of course the day comes when I have to give the answer and my answer never did change I uh, no way I was like no way I'm gonna marry this guy I didn't see any connection with him I just know and of course then part of the chapter the last part of the chapter comes the conversation with me and my mom and of course my mom trying so hard to convince me that Donnie is the right person for me I think simply because he had financial prosperity attached to him and I could not stand the idea of having anything intimate with him not even a hug or a kiss let alone having a lifetime of just being married um, and I just really really fought my point and this is really how I felt about it and um, at the same time I remember when my mom telling you know telling me I said I want to marry for love and she tells me what love brought her I think that was a pitiful 
point in my mind of I remember seeing the pain in her eyes and the disappointment. I think a broken dream of a woman who at one time walked on clouds and then reality hit. And that just so happened to be my mom sitting in front of me, telling me, trying to teach me that love is not all, that it's meant to be or how Love doesn't fix everything, and uh, a lot of times love is not the answer necessarily. And I remember the disappointment, and just not the disappointment, but more the pain that she carried. But it was a silent pain, but it was there nonetheless. If you paid attention, you saw it. And uh, I think that saddened me so deeply, but at the same time, I could not chain myself to somebody just to make my mom happy because I figure how am I going to make my mom happy because I'm going to move away to Austria. She's still stuck with the situation that she has and the only thing that I can make her happier is by sending money which if my father finds out he's going to take the money and you know take it away from her anyway, hide it away or whatever. So she's going to end up not having anything anyway unless I send specific female stuff that my father could not wear, like bras and underwear, <laughs> skirts and dresses that my father was not going to take away. So um, I'm going to try to wrap it up because I'm seeing the time is ticking. I could stay on this um, chapter four uh, for about 10 times longer because I really, really like the chapter. Um, it's more the psychology behind it, uh, the emotions. The, the, the struggles in between a new generation, an old generation, the becoming of a woman, um, making your own choices, um, all wrapped up kind of into a chapter. So I hope you enjoy this chapter as much as I enjoy it. I enjoyed writing it. I enjoy reading it again. Um, most chapters I don't enjoy reading and going over and reliving, but this one I do tremendously. <laughs> So I hope you have a great rest of the day. We'll talk to you later. Bye.